Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our very special Time Capsule Reveal Assembly. My name is Mikhail, and this is Audrey. We are the 2022 school captains of Calvary Christian College Springwood Campus. Mikhail and I will be leading our assembly this afternoon. Before we begin, we invite you to join with us in praise and worship. Our deep connection to the mission of this school, Calvary, is what brings us here today. The Bible verse for this assembly comes from Joshua 23, verse 14. You know and fully believe that the Lord has done great things for you. You know that he has not failed in any of his promises. He has kept every promise he has given. With that verse in mind, would you join with me as we open in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing our school. Thank you for your provision and guidance over the last 39 years. Thank you that we can confidently say that the mission and call of this school has not wavered from when you first planted it in the hearts of those who built this place. Thank you that you continue to, great, to do great things and watch over us as we grow and learn together here at Calvary. Amen. I would now like to invite our Springwood Head of Junior School, Mrs. Winton, to the stage. our service with praise and worship. This is our stage one group of students. If it's going to work, that would be amazing.
participants, you may be seated. Can you take that? Good afternoon, everyone. God bless you. Boys and girls, can you say good afternoon to our very special guests? Can you say good afternoon, very special guests, and God bless them? Our assembly is a little bit different today. I wanted to tell the story of why today is a little bit of a different assembly. It started back at the start of this year, and I wonder if Mrs. Natalie Bean could give me a wave, because I feel like we are friends, although I've never really formally met you. Mrs. Bean reached out to me. She sent me an email back in January this year, and she asked me the question, whatever happened to the time capsule? And I thought, that's a really good question. I think I've tripped over it quite a few times in the years that I've been here, because I've been here for a long time. But I've only been here in the time that Calvary was known as Calvary Christian College. And did you know that before Calvary Christian College became the name of our school, the school had a different name. When it was first started, it was called Logan Uniting Primary School or LUPS. LUPS for short. So we started doing some investigating because Mrs. Bean is very persistent and thank you so much for that because it, the reason that I, whenever I asked anybody else, where is the time capsule, why haven't we opened the time capsule, um, I realised that we actually dug it up quite a long time ago, not a short time ago, which you guys probably think because you saw we did a lot of excavation out the front of Noah Centre back at the start of the year, we had a big leaky pipe and so there was a big mess made and so when we started talking time capsule, people thought we'd just dug it up this year. It's been sitting in the office for about six years and we moved it around a lot. Nobody knew how to open it. We knew it was too special to throw away. So it just kind of sat there and collected more dust um, for a long time. So thank you so much, Natalie, for instigating this um, special presentation today. I want to say a big thank you to everybody who's made the effort to come because I know um, that you, you didn't have to. It's, it's a piece of metal, as you can see, that's been buried in the dirt, but there's some very, very special things inside and um, we're excited to, um, to show those with all the children. So what the purpose of today is, is to learn about our past, but it's also to celebrate our present and we want to look forward to our future and to begin the journey through the timeline of Calvary Christian College, I'd love to invite our special guest, Reverend Gilmore, to come to the stage to talk about the very, very beginnings. Well, how wonderful it is to be back in your home here at uh, the Calvary Christian College now. It wasn't that when uh, we were here. Um, some of you may know Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson, will you stand? Where, where is he? Oh, has he? All oh, right. Well... Mr. Robinson and myself and a group of about nine people, when we came here to not this place, but we were living in Rochdale, that's just another suburb away, and we had a dream, a dream about what God could do. And we dreamed that one day... We would have a place where all the people of God could meet in one place because then we were three little places. A little place at Eight Mile Plains, a little place at Springwood and a little place at Daisy Hill. And those three places were very small but we dreamed and we dreamed that we would come together first as a people of God 
And then this whole place where the lups goes down behind the church here and over on the other side where the older people have a place to live and uh, right here in the centre, the, the worship centre here. We had a dream of that because we looked across this whole site. There were only trees on it. And, uh, and uh, we, our dream was one day we will have a place where these three different places will come, we'll all come together and we'll be in one place. And that dream came to be true in 1982. We dreamed about it in 1979. That's a long while ago, isn't it? And then this whole property was... Together we bought this property and it was just, just, just great trees and scrub. And we were worshipping then as a people of God in the high school. We'd become a group all together and we worshipped in the high school and we dreamed of a place that we would be here. And then eventually... Um, we were able to move here and Mr. Robinson, he had, a, he had a dream. He was my partner and we, there were a number of partners but he was one of the partners and uh, his dream was we, we had a service just outside here. It was called the Service of the Rock and uh, that service was like the dream of what would happen. And television were told about it and a helicopter flew over and the children of the churches, they had placards so that from the helicopter they could see what we had on the placard. And I can't remember even what was on it. Uh, but then the dream began to unfold and the dream became true. And this building was built. And then we had the dream of a school. And originally it was called LUPS, Logan Uniting Primary School. And uh, the children, the young, your, you who are very young, you won't understand this, but you can't just do things because committees have to say, yes, you can, or no, you can't. And the committees of the Uniting Church were saying, no, you can't. And we prayed, Lord, help us. And eventually, the committees of the church changed their mind. This was in 1983. They changed their mind in November 1983 and then we all worked together for a few months and the school began in some demountable buildings just below this building. That was the beginning of the school. And the, one of the first teachers is here. She should stand. <laughs> you know who this lady is, don't you? <laughs> now, because I'm 90, I knew her very well, but I've forgotten what her name is. <laughs> Ann Doyle. And uh, this is what happens when you get really old. Your mind loses names of people. But she, together with another lady, they began the first school and there were just 46 children. That's all. In grades years one to four. And then it grew and grew and grew until this ho the, the school down below here was founded. 
more children came and more children came and it grew until uh, another minister whose name is Bruce Sweet. Is he here today? No? But he, he was the one who was one of the ones that began the Calvary College. And so this school here and the Calvary, Calvary College away down the way uh, became one. And then, of course, this became part of Calvary College. This is the story from the beginning way back in the early 1980s. And children and parents and others who are friends, we praise God for what he has done in using the pe people along the way to initiate and begin a whole new adventure and a whole new family so that the children of every, every age into the future can have a very special education, Christian education in Jesus and then to go on to live their lives into the future. What a wonderful dream. And that's the dream that we had and it came to be. But it was far more and far greater than we'd ever thought. But I want you children and teachers and friends to know we praise God for the dreaming of those at the beginning. We praise God for all of those who've served in the dream and we praise God for how the dream is ever expanding wider and wider and wider. May God bless us all. Thank you, Reverend Gilmore. Fantastic segue into our next guest speakers, which I believe is uh, Mrs. Ann Doyle and Mr. Peter Collins. Beginning. It was basically vacant land here, trees, rocks and a small creek. We didn't have much. We had the two small demountables for our classrooms. When it came to supplies, we didn't have anything like you had. Our first library were books donated by the school families. Our first playground equipment was donated by school families. We didn't even have a school bell to let the children know it was time to come back into the classroom. Mrs Webster and I used to have to go out in the playground and call out to the students to come back, some of whom might be down in the creek. And, of course, it was a little bit difficult getting them back. Until finally, one of the grandfathers of Foundation students, Melissa and Paul Webb, made a school bell for us. Mr Collins has got it here, and he's going to give it a ring. Now, from that dreadful noise... <laughs> You can imagine some of the neighbours possibly thought we had cattle running around. <laughs> Most mornings we had praise and worship outside, not on com comfortable chairs like you've got. The children would sit on the grass on mats. The parents would sit on rocks in the garden and join in with us. That first year of 1984, we watched the church being built. And the next year... Some of us moved up into classrooms in the, underneath the, the church. Some moved in classrooms out the back here. Later in the year, we were able to move down the hill to the classrooms that some of you occupy now. During the third year of LUPS, we were joined by the first of our amazing principals, Mr Tim Rogers. He brought with him wonderful ideas and ways in which to develop the college. I'll give you one example of his thinking. And it was to celebrate the Festival of Shelters. Now for this, we closed the classrooms for several days and school was held outside. Out in the open, out in the oval. Everybody was in free dress. We wore tea towels on our head to remind us of Old Testament days. The students built shelters on the oval out of tree branches they found all around the school. 
and we even had camel rides around the Oval. It was loads of fun and loads of learning in those days. And at the end of it all, we marched around the school, singing and shouting praises to God. And I think some of the students might have been hoping the Old Testament stories would be realised and the school walls would fall down. But of course they didn't. Lops has always been a place for children and animals. We had guinea pigs, loads of guinea pigs. We had large aviary at the end of what is now the office block. It contained a good variety of birds and at one occasion we had Posse the possum for a while. We had huge goldfish in the pond which was established at that stage in what is now the flat area in front of uh, the office where students play. But I think for me the most memorable, memorable creature we had was PC the peacock. He had free range of the school grounds and he would wander in and out of classrooms and sometimes to the shock of some students he would hop up on their desk. You can imagine a pretty big bird would be a bit of a shock. And of course we had the regular visits made by the wallabies and kangaroos and occasionally koalas. But I feel the most important part of those early years was the people. The people who had the faith in the vision of our Christian college. The people who would be prepared to be dedicated and to work hard to make the vision a reality. And I'd like to honour these people right now. So if you were a staff member in those early days, could you please stand right now? Come on, ladies, up your pop. <laughs> And any students, any parents, any board members or volunteers from that time, could you please stand? These people represent the many, the many people who helped build the wonderful foundation on which Calvary Christian College has been built. And they have helped to make it the success that you have as your college today. Thank you. I'll now pass over to Mr. Collins. Thank you, Mrs. Bedoyle. Look, I love coming here, and I haven't heard it for a while, but I love the way you, you bless people. And I think this school has been a blessing to Christian education. It was one of the pioneering schools that established Christian education in Queensland, alongside a, a number of other notable schools. And that legacy has opened doors for an authentic Christian education. But how about we say good morning? Can I say good afternoon? Sorry. Good afternoon, Calvary Christian College. God bless you. Now, that never changes. Thank you very much because I love to be blessed by you and the sing-along of it. So I joined the team in 1990 and became the head of campus down the hill. And that time, Florence Young. Uh, who, where, who's in Florence Young building now? That's the common area, year five. I'm guessing year five. Are we right? Good. And that opened up and that was a new big thing. But I remember the story of the pond. Now, that's where the grass was. And it was a pond that was developed. It was like a concrete swimming pool. had an island in the middle. And between the outside, it, one class had a responsibility to keep it nice and clean and everything. And we had, and it was a real special thing to get in that. It was fenced off for everyone. Guess what? You had between the outside and an island in the middle, we had two planks. Who can guess what happened nearly every term? What happened? Someone fell in. But, you know, workplace health and safety was different back then, and it was so much more fun. <laughs> and playgrounds, we had a whole lot of playgrounds. There was a lot more sticks and stones, and yeah, and as head of school, we had to deal with sticks and stones being thrown in the wrong place, but it wouldn't happen now, would it? No, that's right, you're great students, I knew that. But someone can work it out, a great mathematician. If the school started in 1984, how many years ago was that? Not yet, hold it. Okay, so that's been a long time. So I want to know what that was like. In 1984, was there computers back then? What do you think? Who goes, no, no computers? Who says, yep, there was? Well, they were old, clunky old things, and we had a computer lab, we didn't have computers in this classroom, we didn't have tablets, we didn't have laptops, all those things. But 
So if you look at some of the journals, you see the real fancy computers and you look at them today and you go, my goodness me, they are old hat. And you'll see even a, a, a disc that you had to insert in there, wait, cup of coffee, cup of tea to get it to boot up and do things. So we introduced IT back then. What about mobile phones? Did you have mobile phones? Absolutely not. And that was a great thing for education and teachers having mobile phones, I tell you right now. But you didn't have to take photos. Everyone had to do that. And if you have a look in the outlaw, you see this big photo of all the school in 1983, uh, three, uh, 83, which is the 10th year anniversary of that. And it shows that, but it was a special day. We had to have a huge camera, a whole lot of things, to put, uh, scaffolding to put everyone together. Now you can just do it with a mobile phone. So things have changed, haven't they? Someone tell me the answer. How long is it? Go. What have we got, ma'am? 48? No. Over here, I will better go for a boy, yep. 90? I'm old, aren't I? We're old, we're very old. This is the last chance, yeah, in here, yep, yep. 38 years ago? Pretty close, no. So if we go 84... So six years is 90, and 90 to 2030, and another two to go. So that was a long time ago. But what hasn't changed is the vision that was started. And back in LUPS, Logan United Primary School, it was growing in Christ. And that's still what it is. We want you to be the blessing to the nations, the blessing to your community. And you are in, don't probably fully understand what this school, as parents you're making an investment, and teachers have made an investment to do God's work in schools, to grow and prosper young people who are now some adults here, who have their families to make an impact for the world, for God and for good. So that's part of your story. And so may you make that your life mission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins and Mrs. Doyle. One of the most informative things found in the time capsule was a booklet made by a past year six student named Peter Snelling. Written in 1992, the book is called A Day in the Life of a Lops Boy. I would like to invite Mr. Snelling and his daughter Charlotte, who is a current Calvary student, to share this with you. Hi, my name is Peter Snelling. No, I'm Peter. <laughs> Here you go. I'm ten and a half years old. I go to Logan United Primary School. I'm in year six. I'm going to tell you about the day in my school life. The day I picked is Tuesday in Term 1, 1993. I start, the day, I start my day at 7 a.m., getting up and getting dressed into my sport uniform. After getting dressed, I have some breakfast with my family. I like to have cereal with a glass of milk. About 8.30, my sister and I walk to school. As it is band practice today, I take my euphonium on a trolley. Other children, it is only a five minute walk from where we live. Other children ride their bikes, come by car or catch a bus. Others get dropped off at the church car park and walk down to their classrooms. This is my class, 6H. My teacher is Miss Harmson, and we have 28 children in our class. We start the day at 9 a.m. with devotion. <laughs> then we do a variety of things like math, language, and Christian knowledge. We work at our desk to do board work or, do, or to do work on our own. Like contracts, like contract work. We are working on God is love, and we have looked at God as creator. In God is love, we did a Jonah storyboard about how God's love never fails. We have also looked at third world countries. Lunch is at 10, 10 o'clock when we eat for 10 minutes. We don't have a canteen, so we bring our own lunch. 
I usually have a sandwich, a piece of fruit and an apricot bar. Recess is at 1.20 and we usually have a quick snack like a biscuit or a piece of fruit. Then we go and play. Boys often play soccer or basketball. Girls often play tiggy or just walk around. In term one, after lunch, our class catches a bus to the Logan Aquatic Centre to have swimming lessons. Our swim, swimming coach is Miss Dibble. Year four to six, seven are doing swimming lessons leading up to the senior swimming carnival. School finishes at 3.30 p.m. But on Tuesdays, there is band practice after school. Miss Delport conducts the band. My instrument is the euphonium. I sit at the back of the, between the tenor sax and the trombone. As soon as band finishes at 4.30, I have to quickly get my soccer boots on and race down to the school oval for soccer practice. I play for Logan Uniting Church and a lot of my friends are on my team. My coach is Mr. Morris. When I get home, I have to do jobs like watering the garden. In my garden bed, I have carrots, lettuce, cauliflower and capsicum. I also have to do, some, do homework after school. I work at my desk in my room for about 30 minutes. If there's any time before tea, I have a game of soccer with my brother and sister on the lawn. We have tea at about 6.30 p.m. We usually have something like spaghetti or th lamb chops and vegetables. After dinner, I have a shower and read until about 8.15 when it lights out. This is the end of a busy Tuesday, March 1993, in the life of a Lups boy, Peter. Pretty well the same, isn't it? Any questions about 29 years ago? <laughs> just on regards to computer games, just the extra note at the end. A popular pastime in 1993 was to play Sega or Nintendo video games. I played Sonic. See, it all comes around. And I used to wear T-shirt, board shorts. Um, hot coloured T-shirts were in. Any questions for me? Yes. Why did you, how did you well, to give you an idea of what I did back then. Yes. In 1993. <laughs> so this has been lying in that uh, time capsule for about 29 years. Maybe one more question. Yes. Yep. a very philosophical question. I just wrote it at the time. Just give you an idea of what we were like back then. It's pretty similar, isn't it? Maybe, you know, things were a little bit older looking, but uh, it's pretty well the same, isn't it? Maybe better technology, like I've got an iPhone now, but back then, used to run around to the neighbour's place and knock on their door. You want to go play? That sort of thing. So very, very different to what you guys see now on your Facebook and everything. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. We now invite you to sit back and relax while we take you through memories of the past and the contents of Calvary's 10th anniversary time capsule.
our history has a big impact on us, and by understanding it, we can better understand the way things are now. When you picture what life will be like in 30 years' time, what do you picture? Do you think there'll be driverless cars, maybe even flying cars? Just as we love to hear from Mr. Snelling about what life at Calvary was like 30 years ago, I'm sure students in 30 years' time will love to hear what school life is like for us now. So I've made this booklet that can go in Calvary's next time capsule of what our school life is like for us. Here is my life as a Calvary Christian College student. I'll run through it with you. As most of you may know, my name is Liam Rutley. I'm 11 years old and in grade six at our wonderful Calvary Christian College. I love to read, swim, play soccer and AFL. I also love playing piano, singing, debating, public speaking, and helping out on the AV equipment. This year, I'm even privileged to be the Flint House captain. You can see here our map of the school and how fortunate we are to be nestled into the Daisy Hill Forest and all the native animals we get to see around the school. Unfortunately, we did once see a possum being eaten by a snake. That was not so pleasant. <laughs> here I've explained about how our Calvary students learn through stage-based learning plazas. You can see our stage three students, which is grade five and six, coming together to learn. Our timetable shows us what a typical day for me looks like. Usually we have spelling, reading groups, or writing to start off. After morning tea, we have reading followed by some math work before a second break. And then in our last session, if we're not at chapel or in school sport, we're working on our unit of inquiry, which is where we focus on a topic and learn about it in many different ways. It's always amazing to see everyone's work presented in an exhibition. And of course, we can't talk about learning these days without mentioning our home learning during COVID-19 lockdowns. Lucky for, luckily for us, our teachers were very organized and provided learning at home packs. These days, we all have our own laptops and many great programs to help us learn. Do you, what do you think the technology will be like in the future? Do you think there'll be holograms? As we all know, extracurricular activities are a big part of our Calvary lives. Some of my favourite clubs are debating, public speaking and choir. But I love being a part of all sorts of club, clubs and think it's a great opportunity to try new things. I've always loved music and I've been learning piano at Calvary since grade one. I've been in the choir since grade two and have recently started private vocal lessons. I love that I can do all this at school. It's always a fun part of our week when we are playing sport. We have sport lessons as well as opportunities such as in-school sport and football tournaments to play sport against other schools. We also have amazing carnival days throughout the year. I especially love the swimming carnival, but I also love going to support Flynn House and encourage the younger students. I thought it would be interesting for future students to see how great Happy Hands is. I love how grade six run the cafe and it brings us all, and it's even better when, ah. <laughs> I love how grade six run the cafe and it's open to the whole school and I really love the pancakes. One of the greatest parts of our school is the community events that we have here. I love that it brings us all together and it's even better when we cook our own pizza in our awesome pizza oven. So delicious. I'm sure we can all agree that one of the most fun parts of learning are our camps and excursions. I know I looked forward to our camper trip for years and will always remember playing the piano at Government House. All those Calvary piano lessons paid off. Our chapels and assemblies on Wednesday afternoons are a great time to celebrate our achievements with God. I'm even privileged to provide the audiovisual support for our school, which I love. I'm sure that in 30 years time, it would be lovely to remember the college leaders from this year, our school captains, house captains, and prefects. I imagine Mikhail will be running Google by then and Audrey will probably be prime minister. <laughs> Along with many other Calvary students, I'm lucky enough to play soccer at the Logan United Soccer Club. And yes, I'm crazy enough to be the goalkeeper. As you can see, I'm so lucky to attend school at Calvary Christian College. There are so many great opportunities to learn, grow, and try out new things. I can't wait to see what the future holds. Hopefully Mrs. Winton will still be head of school when they open the next time capsule, since she's so young, of course. <laughs> and she'll invite me along to see what the school is like then. Calvary today is a very special place, and share what it means to, you, to us now and for the future, I'd like to invite our principal and CEO, Mrs. Sherilyn Gostello, to the stage. Thank you.
Thank you, Liam, for that lovely insight into some of the differences between the way Calvary is today and the way it was in the past. What many of you don't know is that history was my favorite subject when I was at school. And so when Mrs. Winton told me about the time capsule, I got pretty excited. And one of the things that makes me very sad is that I cannot meet face to face the founding principle of Calvary. I've met and spoken with every other principle of Calvary. And so I'm really sorry I can't have a chat with Tim Rogers. But what did happen is that when we opened the time capsule, the thing that I pounced on was something that had been written by Tim Rogers way back in 1991. And what made me most excited was that a lot of what he wrote is exactly what I would be talking to you about today. And so I've got three quotes from him that I want to share with you. If we can pop the first one up. Calvary is growing again. And what Tim Rogers wrote in 1991 is, we are expanding again in the midst of an international recession. The church and school leadership are asserting a greater dominion over the powerful force of education in our city. True then, true today. The second quote, history will judge us. Now, we've been talking about how will we know we're a successful school, and we've said, in 10 years' time, and it sounds a lot like this, what he said was, in 10 years' time, some of the primary students of today will be parents seeking Christian education for their children. Will they choose us? So you guys, I'm counting on you to bring your children to Calvary. And we know, because we're looking at the data, more and more alumni are bringing their children for education at Calvary. Great. And the last thing, he said, we will continue to demonstrate to the nation that zeal for the kingdom of God and pursuit of high academic, sporting and social standards are both compatible and achievable. Well, let me help you get what he's saying. What he's saying is that to be Christian, to be a Christian school who want to worship God, and to be a school where we are great at learning can happen in the same place. And so that is still true today. So I'm really excited that Calvary's in a place where what was important yesterday is still important today. And Mrs. Doyle, you spoke about animals. Guys, do you know that in the last week, 10 new baby lambs, what's a baby lamb? 10 new lambs were born at our Carbrook campus. And as soon as they're big enough and their mummies will let us take them away, we'll bring them to introduce them to you. So Calvary today and Calvary into the future is still the same place at heart as it always has been. But I think there are some things that are different and that's appropriate too. God bless you all. As our assembly comes to an end, I'd like to invite Pastor Jaden, a pastor of Real Life Christian Church, to share a blessing and closing prayer. Hey guys. That's the school that we call home. Yeah, it's so cool looking back at how God has been so good about uh, and see all the blessings that he has given this community uh, and this school over the last 30 years. And we look back so that we can get excited, we can celebrate what he has done, and so that we can also look forward at what he's going to do over the next 30 years. Uh, I get to be in an amazing role, which I think is just a, a beautiful example of the vision uh, that uh, LUPS had 30 years ago, where I get to work both in, in, in the church and in the school as well, uh, affectionately known as Pastor Jaden, um, and, and, and seeing this amazing relationship between both school and church, and I'm so excited to see what God is going to do. So as we finish up today, I would love it if you would join me in prayer as we ask God expectantly and excitedly to do an amazing thing over the next 30 years. 
So would you join me as we pray? Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for the significance that today has been, that as we look back and see all the awesome things that you have done, that we would get excited for what you are going to do. We thank you for those that have gone before us, that have paved the road that we are currently walking along, who have set a vision that we get to continue to walk and strive towards. Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done. And we ask that as we go out from today, as we continue through 2022 and into the future, we would be continually showered with all the love and blessing that you have for us here at Calvary. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to pass on over and we're going to wrap on up. That concludes our time capsule reveal. Thank you, parents, invited guests, alumni, and staff, both past and present. We have the contents of the time capsule on display out in the courtyard and invite you to head out that way for afternoon tea. Those who might be interested in taking a tour of the school, we will meet in the courtyard around 3.30. Prep students, please look to your teachers and head out.